previous to the organization, uh, Daniel Gafford getting the contract extension. Um, what's your reaction to that, and why is he the guy that you guys want to commit the future to? Yeah. Well, it's positive news. You know, it, it gives him security, uh, gives us an idea of who we have in the fold. It takes a lot of pressure off him, I think. Throughout the season, just kind of thinking about it, dwelling on it, uh, you can put that to bed and play. Uh, so I think, you know, he can play now with a clear head. He's not concerned about, you know, maybe the immediate future. But uh, we look at him as a you know, foundational piece, a guy we can move forward with. Um, and we have a lot of confidence in his ability. Um, we expect a lot. And I think, you know, his potential will uh, have to kind of dive in there and see what he's got. But I think it's untapped. What makes you think that he can tap into that potential? Are there certain intangibles or traits that you see where it's like this guy's going to keep getting better? I've seen it within, you know, the last month and a half, two months, but also, you know, from the film I watched prior to getting the job, you know, he's a better player. Um, he's 23. So, you know, he's still got to grow into his own and figure out his own game, but he's shown incremental steps thus far, which are positive. So it's exciting to see his development. And, uh, you know, I think it's uh, an opportunity for him to grow. And what is the plan at this point for Rui? I mean, you guys are obviously uh, leaving the town. Will he Will there be coaches staying back to work with him? Is there anything like that? Yeah, he's a, he'll have individual uh, workout times. Um, he'll, he'll remain here and, and get that in, get his conditioning in. So it's still, you know, there's no timetable. So we'll, we'll see how he progresses and then, you know, slowly implement him as, uh, as best we can. Wes, um, obviously, we asked you about Brad's uh, vaccination status earlier. And you said, you know, kind of used to dealing with all that stuff. And going to Canada, how, how do you guys approach? I know he's pretty much just got to stick to hotel venue or bus. Does that change anything with how you would otherwise run a road trip? No, it, it, it just affects him directly. But um, we've been through this and, you know, down the road with this, with protocols, not just here, but every team has. So we'll follow the guidelines. Um, you know, obviously each jurisdiction has their own rules. So we'll have to abide by those. But as far as, uh, you know, it applies to us as a group, it's a business trip and we'll treat it as such. Everybody went. No, no issues. No. Um, when we were asking you uh, about Danny, I can't remember if she was asking or not, but um, just in terms of him and his readiness, in terms of the things that you're talking about with all the young players with communication, where does he kind of stand on those kind of intangible factors or more less on, less on court stuff? Well, it fluctuates, you know, and I think that's the mark once again of a young player. Some days he's, he's really dialed in and he's got it. You know, you feel like he's on the same page. Other days he looks a little lost. Um, I just think that's just the, the natural maturation a young player has to go through. Um, you know, it's it, for him, it's, you know, stay in the moment. Because I think sometimes he gets so obsessed with what he perceives as a past failure that it affects his next shot, affects the next play. So, no, you, you can't uh, bypass that. You got to learn from those, those mistakes, but you can't dwell on it. And I think it's important for him to understand you have to have that next shot mentality. Uh, if there's a problem, understand what the problem is, fix it, and move on. Um, just wondering ahead of the opener what you guys worked on today. A lot of it was uh, it was a mental day. Didn't do a lot of up, up and down, not a lot of competitive stuff. Um, ironing out our script, the details of the script, you know, touching on some things we may see tomorrow offensively. Um, we had another – a good session is just a quiet drill where coaches can't say a word and, and players, you have to talk us through all these situations. What are we doing? What's the responsibility? So just kind of fine tuning some of the things we've harped on, you know, throughout preseason. Do you feel like there's been improvement in the communication? Oh, no doubt. It's not perfect, but, uh, you know, every practice seems to, to get a little tighter. Um, every game's been better. It, just the challenge is doing it uh, for longer stretches. All right, Coach, let's move over to Zoom. Neil? Hey, Coach, uh, obviously last you know few preseason games, you've had Brad in there as primary ball handler. Denny was also in there. You said you wanted to put him in you know, different opportunities, different roles. How have you seen him you know, adjust in those roles um, you know, as a secondary ball handler? I don't see it more as an adjustment. You know, I think you know, he, he's got the capability of, to be a playmaker. Uh, he can go get his own whenever he wants. That's obvious. Um, but to move him around, just, just so he understands that, you know, all five spots on the floor. And I, I think that gives us the flexibility to move guys around within the offense. So we're not running a separate play. We're just, you know, 
changing up who's involved and who, who starts the offense versus who's the recipient. Um, it just gives the guys a better understanding of all five guys and their responsibilities in that action. And I don't think we've asked you a lot about your coaching staff that you've put together around you. Who is your, you know, go-to offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, you know, is, you know, coach Blair, your main guy that's working with the big guys or how do, how do all their different roles spread out? Well, you, you know, the, the staff and, and the way it was constructed, I wanted to put people around me who could obviously augment my deficiencies. Um, you know, I didn't want to thrust all the defensive stuff on one person, but, uh, you know, that'll be spearheaded for the most part by Pat Delaney and uh, Mike Miller. So just kind of pairing those two guys up um, and their input helps me just kind of where we are, where we need to be, what's missing. On the flip side, you know, pairing uh, Joseph Blair and Zach Guthrie um, on the offensive end. So I don't want to peg them necessarily as a offensive defensive coordinators, but those two areas are kind of their, their realm and they'll help me, you know, in those areas. Thanks coach. Mm -hmm. Christos. Hello coach, hope you're doing well. How you vision Danny Avdiga's role this season and what impressed you most so far in this preparation? Well, he's going to have a bigger role. Uh, you know, I want to see him, his minutes, you know, see an uptick. Um, I want him to be able to play uh, late game situations, you know, if necessary, but he's not there yet. So he's, got to, he's going to have to earn those minutes. And nothing is, uh, is given. And I think he's well on his way to doing that. Um, but I want to see him uh, get out of his box a little bit. You know, he, he came in as a shot maker, playmaker, didn't get an opportunity to do so much last season. So get him the ball, see where, see where he can help us. Um, you know, obviously as the, the offense breaks down and ball's moving, I think that uh, the fact that we put so much shooting on the floor uh, generates those long closeouts. So now it gives him an opportunity to put the ball on the floor once again, attack the paint, draw the defense, and then make the right plays. Um, I've seen him do it in practices and drills. Um, I think he, right now he gets a little frustrated with, you know, he, the shots aren't falling, but that's okay. Uh, he's taking the right types, types of shots. Um, he's trying to make the right reads and defensively he's getting better. So we have a lot of confidence in Danny and um, I want him to have as much confidence in himself as we do in him. And what kind of flexibility you have as a team with Danny on floor, Montrezl and Perkins? Well, it gives us a lot of flexibility, you know, aside from those guys, honestly, we could play 11 deep, you know, and that's tough to do in a 48 minute window, but if necessary, we can do that. And uh, I think we've shown throughout the preseason, those, th those little stretches where, you know, is, whether it's the second group, the first group or combination of the two, um, our guys are starting to figure each other out. Um, you know, it's obviously it's go time. So we're going to lean on our, our heavy minute guys, but we've got a lot of depth and flexibility if necessary. Okay, Maimon. Did you say Maimon? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello, coach. Neil Maimon, Sport 5 Israel. How are you? Good, thanks. Last season, we saw a lot of time that Danny was quite open and he didn't get a lot of the ball. Did you going to use him differently? And if I can ask, which position do you think that Danny is the most effective? Uh, yes, definitely plan on using, you know, a little bit more. Um, I think with our spacing, um, you, you've got Trez, you got Gaff rolling, uh, spreads teams out. That'll open up a lot of open shots for him as well as others. But uh, he can play off the bounce, play a secondary ball handler. Um, he's a dynamic pick and roll player. I, I didn't think he got the opportunity to do that a whole lot last season. So uh, he'll get that chance. Um, you know, I think it's important for him to, to grow, expand his game a little bit. Um, and he's just got to play with a little bit more confidence, bottom line. Uh, what do you say? What do you think about his character? Because he just came back from a long, long injury. From a long, long injury. Do you think in, that he has the right thing to, you know, take a Washington Wizards forward? Oh, absolutely. You know, he's a tough minded kid. He, uh, once again, he puts probably more pressure on himself than, than he should because I think he really wants to be good. Um, and he, he gets down on himself at times, but, you know, I think that's his competitive spirit. So I applaud his efforts. You know, he's, he's worked through a lot over the summer, had a little setback in September. Uh, so he had to put a little extra time in, you know, coming into training camp a little behind. So he, he's, he's playing catch up at this point, but uh, you know what? I can't, I can't 
say anything negative about his effort, his energy. Um, and even after, after practice, he's asking questions. He's pulling guys aside. He wants to do extra script. Uh, so it's important to him. It matters to him. And I can't say enough about his, his character, his demeanor, and his approach. So obviously they said they were easing you in at the start of training camp and you missed the first game. Kind of how, how much do you feel like you're caught up to this point as you get ready to start the season? Uh, I think I did a pretty good job. Um, I think I need that uh, one game to really figure out how we play and, and to rest up and really get my uh, body going. And I think I also trust the guys around me, like the trainer staff, the training staff, all the guys that really work with me every day. They uh, have the best suggestions for me. They know what's the best for me. So I'm, I'm trusting on them on every word they say. And um, as you see, uh, I think we've been uh, through a great training camp. I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty much ready. And um, the start of the season, good. And it looks like you'll be in the second unit and maybe a playmaker in, in that group. Uh, what stands out to you just about the, the five players that, that might be shaping up as the bench for this team? I mean, it's, it's really dynamic. I mean, sport in general is really dynamic. Our team, uh, we have so many good players in different positions, and you never know how we end up playing with. But uh, of course, um, for now, the second unit, as we play the in preseason, feel good. We're moving the ball great. Uh, we bring that energy from the bench. And um, the big, the big, the big point is is always to try and 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 play better than the first unit. It's kind of it's kind of the thing. And um, that's what keeps us going as a team. I mean, we're all one team, and everybody will do everything he needs to 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 get far. So uh, excited. Danny, what's the last? Four preseason games, the three, the next one, the last one. Um, it wasn't easy for me. I don't, I don't like to uh, lose games, especially when you're up that much. Um, I think you'll. Don't get me wrong. I think it was good for us because we learned from that game a lot. Um, we learned that we were up and we need to know how to close the games, and and we had a good good lead. And we need to be more focused. It's, it's, it's on me, too. It's on me, too, because I made a couple of decisions in the end and uh, uh, that maybe I could have been more aggressive and go to the free throw line. But especially in defense, our defense at the end, they were just hitting free threes. And the point is, it's always to breathe, calm down. We good. I mean, that's, that's I, I got gathered everybody up and just said, hey, listen, guys, let's close that game. Let's take our good shots. Let's play defense like, like we do always. And um, eventually, uh, it didn't really work, but uh, we learned from it. So that's the biggest point. Um, it was good for us. And something you hear a lot about you from Wes and different players and stuff is that you're so competitive, you take things really hard, and you feel like you're not doing something perfectly. For you, how, what does it take to kind of snap you out of that, to just like, to, to move on? Is that something that you've had to work on? Of course. Um, <laughs> I'm always want to, you know, I'm always playing the hardest I can, the hardest I can. And uh, yeah, a lot of times I'm want to be perfect from the beginning. And slowly the people next to me that I love, they always tell me it doesn't, it doesn't come right away. I mean, I need to understand that I'm, I'm still getting the rhythm. I'm still like coming back from injury. I mean, the first practice and or the first game that I came back, I was expecting to be like better than what I, uh, I remember myself before I got injured, but it doesn't it doesn't happen in a second. I mean, eventually it will, but I was rushing to be like the fastest, like be stronger than what I was, like score more or do do more things, and and it shouldn't be like that. I should I should grind slowly and be patient with with my staff and it's my uh, staff and uh, be uh, better every day. And I'm trying to do that now and uh, work on it. And yeah, now I'm positive all. So, yeah, <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to. Um, I also wanted to ask you about Brad. I just heard a lot of the speech that he gave before the preseason, uh, before the preseason started and everything like that. This year, since things are a little bit different for him, from what I understand, like he might not be able to be around you guys all the time just because he's not vaccinated and things like mm. that. Um, how is that working? How do you just, how do you notice his approach to leadership or that pertains to, you know, things that he's telling you? I think uh, Brad shouldn't straight, like, he's going to tell the truth regardless. Like, 
he's uh even if he's not going to be with us because of the vaccination we support him i mean still uh, the main player he uh he, he knows what how how uh how the team should run and and and, and we trust him like i mean in the end of the day he's a leader he's our leader and and i feel like uh he does a great job by talking to us and tell us the truth if we don't look good he's gonna say it if we if if we look good he's he's gonna come up and say it too so I mean, uh, it's a big key. Brad is a big key for us this season, and we need him with vaccination or without vaccination. So um, that's about it. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Daniel Gafford getting a contract extension, especially as a young player who could maybe see that some strike. So the question was, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, are your thoughts, what are your thoughts on Daniel Gafford's contract extension, especially as a young player who could see that maybe something strive for a step for you? I'm super happy for him because I know how hard he's working. Uh, I see him all the time. We're shooting in come probably in around the same time in the morning too. He's getting treatment after me. Um, and I always see him in the gym working, in the weight room working, or in the court working. So. To see uh, uh, Daniel uh, working like that, I mean, I'm, I'm super happy for him. He deserved that. He works hard. He, he helps us on the court a lot. And he's a, he's, a, he's a good guy. So, I mean, all the props to him and just keep going. I mean, congratulations. Hey, Danny, um, yeah. I'm curious how you feel like you guys have adjusted um, in terms of your communication. You know, coach said you guys went through a quiet drill today. How do you think the team has progressed from when you guys first got together around Labor Day to now heading into the season? I think us coming uh, before a little bit earlier than what we needed to really help us, really to understand each other and, and know how to communicate. We're doing a lot of stuff off the court too together. So I feel like um, being friends and building this chemistry off the court really helps us on the court too and be comfortable more and talking to each other and understanding each other. And uh, it was a big part of it and a big key. So um, for now, I think we're um, communicating good. I think there's a lot to improve. But I think it's going to come with time and throughout the season. But for now, I think we have a great uh, starting point. So. And we know, you know, you're obviously a very hardworking guy, always looking to improve yourself. Coach told us that, you know, he would see you after practices, you know, asking questions, trying to, you know, figure little things out. Can you share with us a little bit of, you know, specific areas that you're hoping to improve yourself? Of course. Um, as, as, one, as one question that I mentioned before is that I'm taking a lot of things hard sometimes. And one of the points is there were some practices that I got confused and I didn't run the play good or I did some some uh, some stuff that I shouldn't do on, on defense or offense. And, and, and after practice, I stay and I figure out why I did this stuff. And I'm not just like, oh, whatever, I'm going to figure it out <laughs> next practice. I'm trying to learn at the same at the same time, like the same time you're playing. So you don't really have time to add, to stop and ask a lot of questions. But I'm always um, staying after practice and, and, and asking the coaches to help me out and how I figure that out and how, how I need to play if I'm there or there. And I'm really trying to master all the positions that I'm probably going to play in the game. That I know that if I'm in the one or I'm guarding the two or I'm guarding the four, how I'm playing the best at that position. And another story that I'm going to tell you is Yesterday after after the practice, me and Anthony Gill, we stayed and we brought three more coaches to run all our plays. So we're really taking that seriously. We really want to be perfect. And we want to um, to not be worrying about uh, some stuff. Lights. And um, that's about it. <laughs>